And I put together just a chart to show you the names of the, the interpretations. Uh, you can see Oracle calls theirs PLSQL, uh, IBM SQL PL, and that stands for Procedural Language, pretty common acronym in the SQL world. And then, hey, there's the oddity right there that both Sybase and Microsoft both have their own interpretations of the SQL language that are both called Transact SQL, but are in fact, in modern times, 2010, very different. It used to be years ago that Sybase and Microsoft worked together, and Microsoft effectively released a, a uh, what we would call a white label version of Sybase SQL Server. Um, in other words, that meant that Sybase developed all the code and Microsoft just stamped their name on it and gave it a new version number. Um, uh, but that's evolved and that's changed. There's no relationship between the two anymore, but they still have the same name for their interpretations of that language. Right? So knowing Sybase Transact SQL still going to be different than knowing Microsoft Transact SQL in the, in the modern days. Right? Now, it, struggle with this one, uh, sorry. Um, a lot of the folks watching this will have Oracle, they'll have even many multiple versions of Oracle they have to support, they'll have Microsoft, they'll have multiple versions of that that they have to support. So knowing how the SQL language works itself, rather than just Transact SQL or just uh, you know, PLSQL is a big boon. This is, you need to know the how of it that it all works so that you can deftly move between these okay all right so I know I've said it before this is a course for Microsoft SQL Server that then means this is a transact SQL query writing course now when we get into sections that are not standard for example that are part of those proprietary extensions I'll do my best to point them out I can't promise that I'm gonna point every single one of them out I'll do my best to do that and what I'll try to do when we encounter those situations is show you both a proprietary way to do it and a standards based uh, standards based slash non proprietary way to solve the same problem in my experience let me just speak to that for just a second it seems that every database platform has their own set of extensions and they're often around common scenarios. Therefore, if I show you a Microsoft proprietary SQL way to do something, and then I also show you the alternative way to accomplish the same thing using a standards-based, if you took that standards-based solution to another language like Oracle, it may or may not work. They may have chosen to write their own implementation of it. Okay, so it's really hard to write portable SQL code. You have to know, it's not just about knowing what is standardized in SQL Server. It's about knowing what is standardized that both SQL Server and Oracle both support without changes. Because okay, you can write it so that it fits the standard and works in SQL Server and should work in Oracle but doesn't because that's not how they implement it. <laughs> I'm not trying to pick on Oracle I just think you know they're one of the more popular ones and they're just we were talking about them earlier all right so let me just speak this is going to be weird for some of you guys let's say that you're an Oracle developer a Sybase developer a DB2 developer Informix developer MySQL developer whatever SQL developer and you're still with me we're what seven videos into the course and you hadn't quit even though I'm talking about transact SQL is this the right course for you? It might be. <laughs> it might be. Um, there are not that many affordable, well-taught courses on writing queries for some of those platforms. And so this may be a great way for you to get the basics down. Remember, it's about learning SQL uh, at the core. Primary keys don't change between the systems. So it might be for you. And I know some of you are sitting there going, what? I, and the reason I put this in here, and I've probably taught this same uh, a variation on this theme for a decade now, 
And I'm telling you, once a year, I get, at least once a year, I get somebody coming into class and they don't even use SQL Server. They don't even use Windows. They're, not, they're on Unix, for example. They don't even know the first thing about Windows. But their boss said, we're moving to Microsoft SQL Server in two years. I want you to be the lead person. You're going to learn all the query stuff, and you're going to teach everyone else back at the office. So there you go. you got to know it. <laughs> or I've seen many cases, uh, particularly in the military, where they had, not to pick on the U.S. military, I'm sure most of them are like this, but to move up in ranks, you have a certain number of hours of training that you must go through. And sometimes, you know, some of these guys don't care what the training is. It's just that they get to go to class for a week and don't have to be at the base. And <laughs> they'll take any class. They don't really... All right. I, that sounds bad. I'm not meaning it to sound bad. I'm, that's what's happened. I, in fact, that was the last one that I taught. I had somebody doing that. <laughs> All right. So... Well, I'll see you in the next video. We'll talk about the different versions of SQL Server that we're going to talk about and why it's actually important.